It's a basic human need to ask, who are we? Where do we come from? How did we get here? Why do we look the way we do? The story of our evolution is just a small chapter in a much larger story, the evolution of all living things. Evolution shows us that we're much more connected to the rest of the world, the rest of animal life, than we could ever have imagined. We can recognize the connection to our closest relatives, but when we know how to look, we can also find it in other mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, even insects. The deeper we dig, the farther back we go, the more we see that everything alive has evolved from a single starting point. The tree of life has been branching for four billion years. And we can now follow its branches back to their roots. When we look back over time, we find certain signposts, certain key events, the great transformations, the big evolutionary steps. In the history of our planet, a few great transformations have opened the door for new ways of life and new forms of life. 50 million years ago, land mammals evolved into sea creatures. Long before that, fish colonized land. At the dawn of animal life itself, the first bodies appeared. These are some of the chapters in life story, our story. And part of the fun of studying this is understanding each different chapter. Because by understanding those chapters, we can begin to see the unity of life, the common history of all life on Earth. Human civilization stretches back thousands of years. But compared to the age of the Earth, we humans have only just arrived. The Earth is really old. If you take the entire history of the Earth from 4.6 billion years ago to the present, and sort of call that an hour, the first 50 minutes are largely spent in a world of microbes, single-celled organisms. Animal life appeared in the last 10 minutes of that hour. All of human history, our civilization, our evolution, happened in the last hundredth of a second of that hour. We've come quite late to the party but we've been shaped by the same forces that have helped shape all life on Earth. To understand how we fit in, we need to look back to long before our own origins to see how other living things evolved. Whales are the largest living animals. Like us, Whales and dolphins took on their present forms relatively recently. For a long time, the origin of these marine mammals was a scientific mystery. Whales are so different from every other kind of mammal that we can't easily relate them to anything else. And so they're off by themselves as a branch of mammal evolution. Mammals first appeared on Earth around 200 million years ago on land. Mammals are warm-blooded. They give birth to living young. And they breathe air. These are all adaptations to living on land. 
But whales and dolphins are mammals too. They're mammals that live in the water. But we know that mammals evolved on land. So it's a real puzzle how whales originally evolved. By understanding how that happens, we'll begin to understand how these big jumps, these big transformations happen generally. People are interested in whales, and I can understand. They're so beautiful. And Their origin is such a mystery. Whale? Whales are one of the few groups of mammals that have really large, complicated brains like we do. And so in a sense, there are alter egos living in the sea while we live on land, dominating the sea while we dominate land. And I think for that reason, we're very interested in what goes on there, how they got there as a reflection of our own history through geological time. When Phil Gingrich began his career 30 years ago, he knew nothing about whales, and that was just fine with him. He was drawn to geology mostly because he couldn't imagine a career spent behind a desk. I think I was interested in geology because it was a science outdoors. And in geology, I became interested in paleontology because it was about life and the history of life. Gingrich's early interest in primitive land mammals eventually took him to Pakistan. It was there that he made the kind of find most paleontologists only dream about. A fossil that would rewrite one of evolution's greatest stories. I found the back of a skull that I couldn't identify. It had a very good, well-preserved ear region, and that offered the clue to what it was. The shape was familiar, but in other ways, it was like nothing Gingrich had ever seen. This is the original specimen. It's the one we found in about 1978. There are several things that strike you. One is it's very similar in size and shape to the back of a skull of a wolf. But there was something odd about this skull. On its underside was a walnut-sized bump. If this wasn't here, I would think that this was an archaic carnivorous mammal, what we call a creodont. But it is here. It was part of the animal's inner ear, and it had a distinctive shape. A shape found today in only one kind of animal, whales. What was the ear of a whale doing on the skull of an animal that resembled a wolf? Gingrich was intrigued. So he constructed a model of what the creature's full skull might have looked like. He wondered, was his find a crucial missing link? The first fossil evidence ever found for one of Darwin's most daring claims, that whales had evolved from land mammals. To know for sure, Gingrich would need to find more fossils ones that would show each stage of the whale transformation, what scientists call transitional forms. I want to line them all up. I want anyone to be able to see it and believe it because they've seen it. 